uh, yeah, hello. Uh, welcome to the last two sessions. Uh, today we are going to talk about the mechanics of Bitcoin uh, of the businesses Bitcoin in Bitcoin Island. Yeah. So I'm here with Bill Hill. Uh, my name is Dea Resquita. Uh, and it's really been a pleasure to also come to Boracay and then witness the growth of Bitcoin Island. Uh, we've been talking a lot today about how we can build the community, how, uh, how we can also encourage businesses to accept Bitcoin and Boracay is the new Bitcoin beach type of adoption that we have close to home. You know, we have, I um, mean, maybe El Salvador is too far away, but this is happening in Boracay. And we have Bill here from Pouch that is going to share a little story about about Bitcoin Island. So welcome, Bill. Welcome to the welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. I can barely hear you. Um, when you switch to this, your uh, volume dropped incredibly low. Oh, really? Okay, just a second. You said my volume is really low. Okay, all right. What about now? How can you hear me now better? A little bit better, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh so Bill, uh it's tell getting us, better. Yep. Yeah, tell us a little bit about well Bitcoin Island in, in Boracay. What is it? What what is this people have been um about? I'm just gonna get right into my uh into my my slides because that's exactly what I'm going to do and I've kind of got a flow ready. Okay, so, sure. Go ahead. Uh, uh am I sharing my screen? Uh yeah, you you can yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you can you see, see island boracay yeah okay so i'm here to talk about uh bitcoin island that is boracay uh, philippines it is powered by pouch which is the only uh lightning wallet specific for the philippines we have rails into the banking system here in the philippines so this is a view of our island you can see uh that it's not that big to give you a sense of scale if we were to go across the thin part of the island this walk would take about 10 minutes and when you land here on the ferry from the mainland if you were to get into one of those little golf carts that is the basic transportation on the island to get to the farthest point would take you about a half hour. Uh, so that gives you kind of a sense of scale here. Most of the tourists are not really going to leave this area here. You can see that we've got about 130 businesses in that area because that is the more dense tourist area. If we break down what we have on the island here, this is a little bit dated but uh, because we're at like 270 businesses right now, but the percentages are about right. So you can see we've got um, things that are going to appeal to the tourists over here, uh, coffee, restaurants, bars, uh, food courts, and uh, the shopping and services is going to be about half Filipino, half uh, the tourists and then at hotels. The things that are going to appeal mostly to the locals, the digital nomads and the more brave of tourists are the Filipino convenience stores called Sari Saris and uh, the local wet markets, the produce, the groceries and the homemade food at the Carinderias. So overall, we've got about 260 businesses as of today. So the big question is, why did over 200 businesses join us since we landed on the island six months ago? Uh, here is our team. And so when they walk into a business like this, 
what are the words that they have to say that lead to her saying yes and joining up with Pouch and joining the Bitcoin economy. So what I'm going to do is go through an idealized interaction. First, I'm going to do it at full speed. Then we're going to go back and break down with explanations why we say the words that we say. So I'm here on business. Is the owner or manager here? Yes. So I'm with a payment system similar to Gcash. Gcash is the dominant e-wallet here in the Philippines. Everyone knows what it is. The problem with Gcash is that it is for Filipino only, not for the foreign tourists. And we get a lot of foreigners here. May I show you a two minute demonstration? They almost always say yes. Okay. So then we carry a physical uh, printed QR card like this. It looks like this, it's laminated. And uh, I will open up pouch and I will scan that QR card. It will bring me here where I can say how many pesos I wanna pay. Notice that the unit of count is in pesos. I hit send payment and then I transfer that amount of value to that account and we're done. So that's the first thing that I show them. Then I ask, what about the foreigners that we're interested in? So I look at my pouch and say, this is the store and I wanna receive a hundred pesos. So I type in the amount and this invoice is created. Then with a second phone, if I have it, I'm going to scan that and there it is. I will pay them $1.72 in American and they're going to receive 100 pesos. So that's the next part of the demonstration. At this point, they always ask, how do I get the money out? And so I explain that if you click on the peso wallet, you're going to see a few options and one of them is bank transfer. So this is a list of all of the banks in the Philippines. And that also includes Gcash and Paymaya the two dominant e-wallets that they're already familiar with. And I show them, you know, that they put in their information and that there's going to be a 15 peso charge, not from us, but from the bank, because the banks are the bad guys. And that is how it will be sent. If it's an amount of 50,000 pesos or less, which is about uh, $1,000 US, then it's going to be there instantly. If they need to do more, it'll take one or two business days. The other major way that they can get money out of the system is through something called load, which is the phone credits. No one here has a prepaid or a, a regular cell phone plan. They buy it by you know, about uh, $2 at a time. So the sorry sorries that are the common convenience stores that are everywhere can just put in the, their customer's phone number, choose their provider and send load to them like that. And they can charge whatever they want. So if they sell a hundred pesos, maybe they collect 105 in fiat right then. So that is a way that they can get their money out and make a little bit of profit along the way. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is show them the map. So inside the pouch app is a map of Boracay and they can see all the different businesses. And what I do is zoom in on their area so that if they don't decide to sign up today, they at least know which of their neighbors are there. And so they'll choose that. 
and maybe we'll go through and show all the different businesses like them that have signed up. At this point, I'm going to hand them some signage, let them choose whether they want, oh, are you trying to talk to me? Okay, uh, whether they want the black sign or the white sign, or if they are a bigger business, we will do custom art like this that matches their decor. Finally, uh, most of the businesses we sign up are not going to care a lot about their username. So we carry some pre-made QR cards. And if they sign up with a username like good captain or smart boy or nice flower or rich heart, then they can use that QR card and they've got the sticker and they've just made their account and they are ready to go. And that's how uh, Hidden Shell here was signed up in about 15 minutes. Wow. Yeah, that's really fast, yeah? <laughs> yep. So that is the, the pitch that we uh, teach our crew to go out and do. Now, whether it's still like that after they go out and do it themselves, hard to tell because they're doing it in Tagalog often, but that is the idea. You can see that it is very quick. It is direct. It is to the point. I do not go off on a lot of wild tangents, and I've given this pitch so, so many times that I know exactly what I'm going to say. Um, anytime that you're doing a presentation, whether it's a sales like this or a presentation like this, uh, practice is absolute key mm -hmm. so that you don't just go out there and wing it because when people go out and just say, ah, I'll figure out as I go, they end up going down dead alleys and say, oh, I wish I wouldn't have said that. Oh, it took me 20 minutes to say this. But when Bill gave it, he only took five minutes. What's mm -hmm. going on? And so practice, practice, practice is the key to that. So, so I now like, I like I'm going to go you back. Focus on on like how the the payment, yeah, the, the 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 speed of transaction, right? Like that's the one that you are focusing on, the ones that makes people click. That's certainly one thing that they they are excited about. Mm -hmm. um, the dominant e wallet here is. Gcash, and in theory, they have QR codes that can be scanned and paid. Um, if you go through their app, it takes like five clicks to get to the point where you're scanning the QR, and most of the businesses have self-onboarded. They're not going to figure out how to print a QR code. I don't even know how they would figure out what their QR code is, and if they do that, they're not going to laminate it and it's going to be kind of ugly. Whereas we roll in, we've got the QR codes already made for them. If they choose their own name, we will we'll make the QR and deliver it already with a nice background that um, has their name, has the QR card and is laminated. Uh, for bigger places, we're going to make as many of them as they need. For even bigger places, we have the little uh, plexiglass stands so that they don't have to buy them. Making it easy to onboard is really important because we want Bitcoin to be seen almost as a luxury brand here on the island. It looks good and a lot better than the other e-wallets do. So... To give you an idea, most of the time, if they accept Gcash, they're going to run in back and find some ratty piece of cardboard with the user's um, phone number on it. And you've got to type that out. If you type it wrong, that can be a problem. And it's not really user friendly. They saw this. Oh, you just scan that piece of paper and the money is ready. That looks like magic. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, we make sure that we onboard people very well. Okay, so now 
here is a breakdown of why I said the things that we said there. So if a big white guy rolls up to a sorry, sorry, and says, I'm looking for the manager, everyone is going to shut down. It's a Karen moment, not something I want to do. So we come up and say, I'm here on business. Is the owner or manager here? This tells them no one is in trouble. We just need to speak with the person that can say yes. You got to make sure you have access to power because if you're talking to someone that can't say yes, we're really not getting anything done here. Okay, I'm with a payment system similar to Gcash. First, we want to be equal to something that they already know. They know what Gcash is. So first, let's make ourselves equal. Then I say the problem with Gcash is that it's for Filipino only. I want to say stuff that is true, that they know. Rapport is built because they are agreeing with me. I'm building credibility simply by telling them things they already know. And I am establishing the pain point. The pain that they have is that uh, that foreign tourists are going to be coming here because they want to come to Bitcoin Island and they want to be one of the people that get paid by this. So that's why I'm saying this. Uh, next, I say we get a lot of foreign tourists here. They know this is true and it's building rapport and building up the pain point that we are later going to solve. So may I show you a two minute demo? We put a time limit so they feel comfortable. No one wants to sign up to hear a 30 minute lecture on, on the joys of Bitcoin or whatever it is this guy is selling. So by saying it's a two minute demo, they know it's a limited time. I don't think any of these demos have ever lasted only two minutes because usually they're interested and we go longer. But if they're not interested, it's over in two minutes and they can get rid of me. So the first thing that we do, the easiest way to use this Lightning Wallet is there's a QR code. We scan it, put in the price and hit payment. That is the easiest possible way for this to work. And so I want to do something that shows them results as fast as possible. I believe one of our earlier um, speakers was saying the same thing. You want to show them receiving sats as fast as possible because they get interested in it, right? Yeah. Okay, so we do that. Now I talk about what about foreigners? Now we're doing the same thing essentially, but we're doing it slower. If you think about this talk that I'm giving right now, that is exactly the method that I'm doing. First, I showed the pitch as fast as possible. Now I'm showing the pitch again, only I'm doing it slower with more explanations. So you can see I'm actually using that method right now also. So we show them about foreigners. And when I pull out the Strike app, I show them that this is one of many different Bitcoin wallets that the people might be bringing to the island. This is the first time that I mention Bitcoin at all because I am selling Bitcoin purely on utility, not on the fact that it's Bitcoin. Uh, I believe that adoption is a ladder and first just getting them to have a positive impression of Bitcoin because they're seeing it around the island and then getting a wallet in their hand that can accept Bitcoin, even if they convert it to pesos immediately is a ne next step upon, on that ladder. Eventually, some of our bigger businesses that are not needing all the money immediately all the time are starting to ask, hey, can I buy Bitcoin with this? Okay, we're on the next step of the ladder. So we're making it easier to accept by making it a series of small appealing steps for them. Okay, so they see 
the invoice here for 100 pesos. And why is this important? I get to say what you invoice is what you keep. There were no fees. They asked for 100 pesos. They got 100 pesos. The exchange rate from Satoshis or US dollars or whatever do not matter because the key phrase, what you invoice is what you keep. That answers a lot of their questions about fees and everything else. So uh, how do I get the money out? When they ask this, I already know that we've won. They have started to envision themselves using it and now want to know how can they do the next logical step? Awesome. So uh, we show them how to do this. And I really think that this is critical. Uh, having a way to get out to fiat is something that makes it easier for them to adopt. And I believe that is why we are having the great success in signing up businesses that we have. Now, the truth is, very few of them seem to cash out. We tell them that if they want to come to our office, they can cash out for no fees for free. And very rarely do we get any of them coming to cash out. So, uh, in fact, I've had far more of them come in and cash in because we are a far friendlier way of getting money into the banking system. Uh, one of our super users, she's brought us uh, a fair amount of, of pesos and tells us that basically now she's using this because it can go to her sister's bank somewhere else. So she's using it for internal remittances on the, or not on the island, within the country. So they're starting to see the remittance corridor, which is really important for, for them. So that is, I believe, why these banking rails are super important. Uh, these phone credits load, very important. Uh, I will sometimes even have, give them like 20 pesos and have them buy load for me if they've already signed up, or I will buy 20 pesos of load for them. And when they see their phone light up that they actually got the load, okay, this is a viable model. Um, selling load is big business for these sorry, sorry stores. And the way we do it is much, much easier. So they really do like that. Uh, I show them the map. It's social proof. Oh, look, 300 other businesses have already signed up. I probably should too. And it's cool to be on a map. Some of these are tiny, tiny businesses like this one right here, barbecue stall that's only open at night. It's a barrel with a grill on it and they are on an international map. That's just cool. Uh, signage, uh, I hand them the signs, let them have a choice of black or white. And now the sign is in their hands. People hate giving back gifts. They can have the gift if they sign up though. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's an old sales technique. Does it work? I don't know, but I see you smiling because you kind of think it does, right? It does, it does. <laughs> yeah, um, the old joke in sales is, do you want the black handled steak knives or the white handled steak knives? We've already assumed they want to join up. Just which color sign do you want? So, yeah. Uh, the signage here. This is something that I do because I think it's fun. Uh, for our bigger businesses, the ones that are going to get a lot more attention, we will give them personalized signs. This one here, the purple one, is for Moksha Cafe. Everything there in her uh, coffee shop 
has got mandalas on it. It's purple and it's round. So our sign fits very well with the decor that she already has. Two brown boys, they had a light box outside with a tarp on it, but the tarp got ripped. So I offered to put their logo on and replace the tarp with one that wasn't torn. And so now we've got prominent signage outside of a major bar and it cost me, I don't know, 500 pesos, 10 US dollars for the tarp and you know, 20 minutes of installing it with the guy. So that's good. Uh, this is Red Coconut, a major uh, island hotel. We took their logo, modified it a little bit and made it Bitcoin accepted here. Um, actually, I think logistically, this might be a mistake because when we make the signage look too much like theirs, people don't notice it as much. So I started going more to follow their theme, but don't exactly copy it. This is more like a parody of theirs. This would be a coffee cup for them, and it would see say um, red coconut here, and it looks too much like that. So I, I don't think we should make it exactly like their logo. This one here, uh, their logo is the owl with a couple of our, uh, wings on it. So I took elements of it. So it's clearly part of them. This is a tattoo shop, but it's not exactly their logo. So I think that worked out better. Here is Valhalla. Vikings are cool. So I bought some stock art, put a Bitcoin on there, and it fits very well with their decor, but it isn't exactly their logo. So it does get attention. And these are the kinds of signs that tourists take pictures of themselves in front of the sign. And so I want it to look really good. We were walking one tourist around and he was taking pictures in front of all the signs. But you know this, you were here. After a while, people stop taking those pictures because we're everywhere. So that's, that's really cool when I'm walking people around and that happens. That's really cool. <laughs> okay, so um, here we have pre-made QR cards because we want to shorten the sales cycle. If they choose their own usernames, very often Filipino names are about this long and someone's going to have to type that in later. And, oh, it's just really hard. So a lot of times they don't really care what their username is. So by choosing usernames like this, it is easy for foreigners if they have to type in good captain, that's a lot easier to do. Uh, so we do that. I randomly generate these usernames by going, I went through the BIP39 word list that all of our monomics are made out of. And I had my girlfriend tell me if she understood each of the words and that I said, and then I had her say them. And if I understood it, it meant it was easy to pronounce for both sides. Then I took only the neutral to positive adjectives and the neutral to positive nouns. And now I can just randomly generate them like good, rich, nice, smart, captain, heart, flower, boy. And so I get lots and lots of random usernames that way. So question for this username, is it a for pouch or this is a lightning URL kind of? Thing. So um, it is an, it is their username and it is also their LN URL. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think these are out in circulation. I'm not sure, uh, but if you one of them is Island, that's our donation fund. And so if you were to put Island at pouch.ph into an LN URL, then you could send to us directly. So that's another option. Uh, a lot of wallets are not accepting that yet, 
so I'm not advertising it on our QR cards, but it is something that can be done. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that means that she chose Hidden Shell and we gave her some stickers. We actually try and put the stickers up ourselves because if we don't, they will put them in weird spots that are not useful or they won't put them up at all. Uh, so our goal is to really make sure they are ready to go. Um, we've started uh, trying to tape their QR card somewhere where the customers can see it because they lose these cards. And then we've got to go and print them again. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a hassle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now here are just some general ideas from sales. I was a sale, not a sales weasel, but I worked with sales weasels, a term of endearment uh, for quite a while. So I had to learn some of what they do. One big idea is when they say yes, shut up, okay? Shut up and take my money, right? Once they've agreed, we don't need to tell them about Satoshi and blah, 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 or anything else. We need to get them an account. Later, when you come back and visit them, you can tell them a little bit more about the wonders of uh, our savior, uh, Satoshi. But if you keep giving them information, you might give them information that gets them to say no when they've already said yes. So stop right then, get them signed up. Okay, so common objections and questions and what to do about them. Uh, a very important concept in sales is be willing to walk away. If you're not willing to walk, you're not ready to sell, okay? Um, once they start going down a, a path and are looking for an argument, you're probably not going to convince them. And that is time that is better spent with someone else. So that is an important thing. Uh, some of the questions, <laughs> what about scammers? Uh, I, I try not to engage this very long. So, well, scammers use the internet, right? Yeah. Is the internet a scam? No. Okay. Very good. Great. So yes, scammers use this. They also use US dollars. They use pesos. They use a lot of things. The fact that they're using Bitcoin kind of tells me that it's useful. <laughs> so I don't really want to engage too deeply about that. Okay. What about support? Um, a lot of the other e-wallets that are around are not very good at support. They won't return your calls if you can find a phone number and they're just not generally good at support. So I show them that on the back of every QR card is the personal phone number of someone on the island, that someone is me. So they've got my personal phone number. If they need help, they should call. Now, the truth is they don't always do that. Uh, we've had a few of them have some kind of problem, get frustrated, not call support, and then just take their signs down. And we don't notice until we go to the store later. And then we've got to talk them off the ledge. So uh, little problems can really have outsized effects. But by making sure they've got ways to reach us, we can start to mitigate that. Okay, a few of them are going to tell me I lost money on a shit coin. Don't buy shit coins, but think this only. Don't <laughs> say it, okay? okay. <laughs> um, I'll usually, when they start talking about these other coins, I'll say, you know, there are 19,000 other coins. I'm not smart enough to know much about them. I focus only on Bitcoin. I really do not want to get into their story of how they had $5,000 of shitcoin three, and then they lost it all. It's just never a happy story. I don't want to talk about other coins. I want to talk about Bitcoin. Okay. So what about fees and the exchange rates? The phrase, what you invoice is what you keep, 
is really key to solving all of those problems. All right, if I wanted to do this again, or I should say, when we do this again, you know, tick tock, next island, what are we going to do? Uh, we didn't get an office immediately here because we weren't really sure how well this was going to go. If we go to another island, first thing I'm gonna do is get an office. It establishes credibility. It encourages walk-ins. Bitcoiners just end up in our office uh, a fair amount. I mean, you, you saw our office. It is really difficult to miss this, this sign. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we get people just walking in. Uh, and it's a good meeting space. When we do our hiring, which I'm going to talk about, uh, we can have 15 people in the office at a given time at a rush. So having a meeting space is important. Until we had the office, we basically just rented our office one moksha at a time, uh, you know, one coffee at a time. Okay, a mistake that we made was we tried to hire someone that was good at sales and they wanted a salary and they wanted a high one. Uh, no, this is an entry level position with massive turnover. So uh, when we put out an ad, we will get like 15 people coming into the office wanting this gig work. Um, by the end of the week, maybe one of them is lasted. Maybe after a month, one out of 30 sticks around. So there is massive turnover. This kind of work is not for everyone. Uh, next, uh, do not just pay by the day, pay by the sign up. Uh, this was our mistake with our first sales rep. I treated them more like I would treat a high-end Western sales rep and it doesn't work. It is far better to pay per sign up. Now that we've got three people that have been with us, each of them signing up 50, maybe 60 or 70 businesses, and we're going to want them to start doing the harder to get places, the places that appeal more to Westerners, that is a harder job and they're not going to, the sales cycle is going to be longer than it is on a small uh, convenience store. So we're probably going to have to move into some kind of a hybrid model where they get a certain amount every week for trying and then they get a bigger bonus when they sign up the harder to sign up stores. So it'll that's pretty common in sales to have a salary or a base plus commission. And now that we've worked with these guys and they've clearly shown that they know how to do this, we might have to move to that model. But when we first start getting people in, it's got to be per sign up. Okay. BTCMaps.org is what we have finally settled on for tracking all of our stores. Uh, we started at Coin Maps and we outgrew them. We went to Google Maps, we outgrew them. And so now we're using BTC Maps and it seems like all the communities around the, the, the world are settling in on BTC Maps. They're very good at supporting us. Um, we, I believe we are the most dense collection of Bitcoin businesses in the world at this point. And so we are having growing pains and BTC Maps is really helping to make sure that their map is useful for a high density area. If you go to a lot of places, you're simply looking for anywhere that you can use Bitcoin. With us, it's like, which of the 40 restaurants do I want to go to tonight? And that's a different problem that they're working on solving because we're, we're getting that kind of high quality problem. Okay. If, uh, you know, when we do this again, when we roll into a new town, we're going to focus on small stores because the owner is there. 
we, the sales cycle can be a couple of minutes, 15, 20 minutes. And we want raw numbers when we start growing one of these communities. I will assure you that the first 30 were much harder than the last 100 were. And so how, how long does it take? Um, this week was a bad week. We only got 30 businesses this week. Oh, I mean, the, from the first 30 until uh, the... the uh, oh, the first 30 probably took us two months. Mm -hmm. uh, we weren't focusing on sorry, sorry's. We were focusing on places that tourists would go. And we were trying to get a lot of the logistics figured out, opening an office, trying to train and, si and hire a sales rep. So we weren't really sure what we were doing yet. And now we are. So if we were to roll into a new island, uh, I think we could have 20 businesses in the first two weeks. Uh, so yeah, I think we could do it a lot better the next time. Uh, focusing on the so small stores, this draws media attention and the, the business owners that tourists wanna go to those business owners are hard to find. They are not always on the island and they might be in Manila and it's really hard to get a hold of them. But when they start reading about the Bitcoin Island Initiative, when they're reading about Boracay and then they come to us, this is a much, much easier sales cycle because they're coming to us. So we're generating the media attention by doing this and then the tourists are going to or the tourist based businesses will come to us okay uh in these tourist areas there's always going to be tricycles or these electric golf carts or something and so what we did and we still do is any trike driver that comes in and we put stickers all over their trike and sign them them up to accept bitcoin we will give them 200 pesos that is a half day labor for minimum wage in the philippines so it's non-trivial and then we give them a referral fee of 100 pesos if they bring in their friend uh at some point we got the right person interested in this and we did 45 trikes in one day. It was chaos because they would go gather five of their friends, come in a caravan and stand there, actually train them for us so they could get out of there quicker and uh, collect their 500 pesos into their pouch. And so this got us on a lot of trikes very, very quickly at a fairly low cost. And now you see our signs on these trikes everywhere. And it only costs us about 300 per trike. Not bad for a lot of advertising. And tourists will always use the e-tracks because they don't have any other means of transportation. Yeah. And so you see them uh, everywhere. And so if, again, if adoption is a ladder, having a positive impression of Bitcoin just seeing Bitcoin everywhere is good for business. Mm -hmm. So good. Um, we've tried sign up bonuses for the stores with mixed results that are unclear. So the bigger the business, the less they care about the sign up bonus. We were offering 200 pesos per business to sign up. Um, some of them were keeping it and then trying to sell load. Okay, good. So that was what we wanted it for. But a lot of them just would cash it out to Gcash immediately. And that was not really that effective. And we're not sure that people that are signing up just for a quick 200 are the stores that we want. So we have stopped giving the sign up bonus for now. We might bring it back later. Uh, but it 
doesn't matter for the bigger businesses. So we're, we're taking it out for now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when we're talking to them, we always like to ask if they know any overseas foreign workers. The reason for this is the Philippines has a lot of remittances. And if they know someone overseas and they can use Bitcoin to get those remittances, that's going to be really why we're here. I also like the remittance case because we all know networks grow as the square of the number of nodes. If there's two people, there's only one connection. If there are four people, there's like eight connections possible. And if we want the retail here to be useful, we need a lot of nodes. And then we need a lot of people to spend at those nodes. That is one thing that we're doing, but remittance needs only two nodes, the person sending the money and the person receiving the money. That network of two people is useful to both of them immediately. So uh, pushing remittances is something that we do. And then as a business pouch, it really does not want to be in the retail market for the profit. We're doing it as a loss leader to get more people to have access to re the remittance rails. 36 billion US dollars comes into the Philippines every year. That breaks down to roughly 100 million US dollars a day come into the Philippines. That means six to seven million US dollars in fees are paid every day. We believe that is six to seven million that would be much better off in the Philippines because if they use Bitcoin, those fees, there's about a 1% spread on the exchange rate. And so that is saving about 6 million US dollars every day. Wow. <laughs> when you put it yeah. into that perspective, this is really important. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, and there's a huge market in, in Philippines when it comes to remittance, also in Indonesia. I think like uh, Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia. So, yeah. Yeah. So getting... Bitcoin into their hands and getting them to start doing remittances is super important. We've already got one, uh, you know, we're, especially on the island, we count every little success. So there's a woman here that has an American boy boyfriend who's a Bitcoiner. And every couple of weeks, he sends her um, 5,000 pesos. She gets it in pouch, comes into the office. We give her 5,000 in fiat. And we're trying to encourage her to tell her friends and to keep a little in her pouch and start buying directly from our vendors. But, you know, she comes back every couple of weeks. So, uh, you know, we're taking the slow approach with her. But when she starts telling her friends that it's cheaper and easier, that's what works. Okay, we went to these pre-made account names. They're great. Um, like I said, uh, adjective, verb, only positive, and they're pre-made, ready to go. For those of you that are going to be doing this on the ground, uh, what we end up going to is this. You can see we added a purple border to all of these. That's because when you cut them up, if there's a white border, if you make a mistake, it looks like a mistake. But here, we don't use one of those paper cutters that come down. We use a paper slicer. And then if there's a little bit of an error, the border is there, but it's clearly not a mistake. And so it still looks good. And so we've got these printed out and arranged, slice, slice, and we're good to go. Um, also, if you buy a slicer at the same time, buy extra blades. Uh, we, we wore out a blade after about two weeks. So, I mean, that gives you an idea of 
the volume that we're doing here on the island and the kinds of high quality problems that we're that we're dealing with. Okay, um, I've got a little story about a bridge here. This is the Mackinac Bridge in Michigan. It's the longest suspension bridge in the world. And they have to paint it to um, preserve it from the elements. And so they start on one side, paint it all the way, and then come back. And by the time they're done painting it, it's time to paint it again. So <laughs> there's always a crew on this, on this, on this bridge painting it. And that's where we're at right now. We're hiring our first full-time secret shopper. Um, recently, we did a sweep through the island when there were uh, 250 business or 200 businesses. And we had all hands on deck. And it took us a week to visit every place on the island. We found some had stopped accepting for whatever reason. So we kicked them off the map. Some of them that we found that they needed more training or they lost their QR cards or whatever. So we went back and had to fix those. But at this point, we're just gonna have one person whose entire job is to systematically go around the island and buy something at every store. By the time they're done with that circuit, there's probably gonna be a hundred more and we might have to hire a second person. So we're constantly going around checking on our businesses. This is not perfect, okay? If you come to the island, if they hired new staff and didn't train them, that business might just tell you, we don't accept Bitcoin. They accept Bitcoin, that worker doesn't know they accept Bitcoin and is afraid to say that. So they're just going to say, we don't accept it rather than go ask. So if they're on our map, you can you might have to do a little work for some of them, but yeah. Yeah, so, but I think it's also like adoption. Uh, any kind of adoption needs training, right? Like you need to use it more and more. The more yeah. tourists, the more Bitcoiners that comes to the island, they will they will use it and they will start remember like oh okay this is the step that's also what happened when when I went there with you and and then and, and, um, you know it's, it's really fun also to as a Bitcoiner to teach them hey you know there's you have different app I have different app and then we interact with each other that was really cool yeah so um, you know it, it can be frustrating I I take every failure personally but it's going to happen but if you go around and try and use Gcash at a lot of places, they're not going to accept it either. So it, <laughs> this is not a problem that is unique to Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> this is just how it can be sometimes. Yeah. Okay. So that is Bitcoin Island Boracay. I am very approachable. So if you are trying to build one of these communities, let's talk. Yeah is very insightful and i really like how uh, i mean i personally also can relate to that i think like i found the the use case of bitcoin or or the the need of bitcoin when i start using it as a method of payment as the way you know when i can get remittance for for, for my businesses so back then like when i when i do the retreat businesses um i always accept the money from abroad and it's really it's really hard to accept money to Indonesia because the fee is there's a huge fee and then it takes so long and with Bitcoin even though during you're using on chain like it it's really mind blowing it's really game changing and now we have Lightning that is even more fast and it's a lot cheaper so uh, there's a, some question in the in absolutely the, group. Uh, the first one is from Benny and he asks. Uh, are you guys have any plan to release NFC card similar to what Coin Corner did in uh, IOM? Where's IOM? <laughs> what is IOM? Yeah, but oh, I thought they NFC. said NFT, and I was about to go off on them. NFC. <laughs> NFC. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I, I will suppress my my inner maxi <laughs> here. Okay. Good. NFC, not NFT. NFC. Um, Probably that is not really high on our list 
it is difficult enough to make sure that they have a phone available. So asking them to have specialized hardware, even though um, I, I think some modern, a lot of modern phones can read NFCs, that just, I don't think will work here. Um, you've got to understand that your average Filipino phone has a crack in it, is got a bunch of malware, is almost full, and is about four years old. So, um, like, m I have yet to find one of our businesses when I ask them if they just have a generic QR reader so that they can read, you know, like a QR card like this. Most of them do not. So if they don't have a built-in QR reader in their phone, the chances of them having a NFC on their phone is way too low for us to standardize on that. And then another thing is that people don't tend to carry wallets here. Um, mm -hmm. I found that really weird, but the longer I'm here, the less I'm even carrying a wallet. At this point, I've got my keychain with a uh, little pouch for some fiat in case I get stuck somewhere. But no, I don't carry ID. I don't carry any cards of any type anymore. And I think that's pretty pretty common for the locals also. So no, I don't see that yeah. as being a priority. Yeah, I mean, like you, you were mentioned this when I was in Boracay, that in Boracay, people have this island uh island vibe or island uh type of economy where people just get something in the store and then they pay later and that's how the yeah <laughs> yeah money circle um <laughs> you know people will look and if there's a qr card like a lot of these sorry sorries their phone they they haven't bought phone credits or they've got bad reception or the battery died or something so it's not secure but if you scan their paper QR code, they'll see that it got accepted. That's mm -hmm. good enough for them. Now, I know Bitcoiners don't trust Verify. But you got to understand, here on the island, a lot of these stores, there's no one there. And you just walk in, grab what you want, and leave money on the table. Mm -hmm. Like, we had that uh, typhoon yesterday. I went down to play in the surf because I thought it was fun. But I went past three sorry sorries that were abandoned because they're sensible enough not to be out in a um, typhoon. But <laughs> there's no locks. There's nothing over the window. You could just reach in and grab it. That's just how things are here. So, yeah, there is a lot more trust. Okay. And we have uh, another question. Uh, how pouch make money? Ah. So the, remi uh, the remittance case is where we're making our money. The retail here is really uh, just a loss leader to get this into the hands of people that are going to get remittances. Mm -hmm. So we talked about that 100 million US dollars coming in. If we got all of it, which we will not, that would be a million in that spread from you know uh, conversion every day mm -hmm. i that's a good business to be in are we going to get that a hundred percent of the remittance market absolutely not mm -hmm. but it's still worth going after so that's really what we are after as a company mm -hmm. and um also this is my question like you know uh you guys choose to be in boracay uh to start so first question is why and then the second question is what is your hope that you want for Boracay or for, for Philippines or even okay. for Pauchi? So um why Boracay? Well, we were modeling ourselves off of Bitcoin Beach El Salvador. They started with a, an anonymous donor that put a lot of Bitcoin into the economy. We do not have such a donor but we have all the people, the Bitcoiners that want to come and live on Bitcoin, maybe as a digital nomad, maybe as a tourist. And that is going to be the influx 
of Bitcoin that really kickstarts the Bitcoin economy here. So this is already an international hub of tourism and definitely one of the biggest tourist destinations in the Philippines. So it makes sense to be here so that we can get those um, donations into the economy from the Bitcoin tourists. Mm -hmm. uh, what's our hope? Oh, hyper Bitcoinization. I don't know that I'm going to see it, but I think it's awfully nice of Ethan, our CEO, to let me build my own personal citadel here. Um, <laughs> so I like that. Uh, we're at the point that we almost don't use fiat at all here on the island. When wow. uh, my lady, uh, the Filipina hotel, was on at Manila, it was a huge pain because if she needs money here, I just, you know, send it to her and she's at one of our vendors and it's all good. But she wanted to buy stuff there and they don't accept pouch. And oh my God, it was just such a, a hassle to get money to her. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we, we have a nice little Bitcoin life here. And we really hope that the digital nomads start showing up here and locating here. Uh, we're already seeing tourists like, you know, first it was Manila, then it was in Indonesia. We just got England recently and our first American is um, scheduling. So they're coming from farther and farther away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So guys, um, come to Boracay. It's very close. It's only four hours away to travel there. And as an Indonesian, I really enjoyed there. Uh, and thank you so much, Bill, for showing me around when, when I was there. And also now giving us the, the behind the scene, how is it work, you know, to adopt, to make adoption happen in this, such a small community. I'm, I'm happy to um, be tour guide to anyone that shows up. So <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So see you guys. thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, see you bye -bye. in the next session. Bye-bye.